Oh, this is Pastor Adam Jacobson here at Trinity Lutheran Church, Sioux Valley, Minnesota. Um, we're live recording these services so that they can be uploaded uh, at a later time to our YouTube channel. Also doing a little audio recording as well. As you can see, I have my mic on at this time. So we're going to be going through our service. If you would like to find the service, it is on our church website, uh, trinityscv.org, uh, I believe, or .com. You can try either one of those. Um, and you can find the bulletin uploaded there. You can follow along with the sermon uh, or the service, and you can uh, go that way. We only have one hymn. That's really just to give my voice a little bit of a break. Since I don't have anybody operating the camera with me right now, it might look a little different as we've seen in the past with this service. The good thing is, um, uh, thanks to uh, Denny Staley, I actually figured out how to turn this view around so it's not a complete mirror image. Although now I have to kind of watch myself and it's a little crazy. So uh, if you would like to, please do join us for our service or you can hold on to this video for tomorrow morning. Look for it on YouTube, however you like to go about it at home. Again, we're very sorry that at this time we do have to cancel services for the time being. Uh, we hope to not be doing that too often or any more in the future. Uh, but as of right now, it was a hard decision to make. But looking into the future, we think that right now this would be the best way to go forward. So with that being said, please do join us as we begin our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak together the intro. For you have delivered my soul from death, yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, and God, whose word I praise, and God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can flesh do to me? And God, whose word I praise, and the Lord, whose word I praise, and God I trust, I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For you have delivered my soul from death, yes, my feet from falling, that I may walk before God in the light of life. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
because your abiding presence always goes with us, keep us aware of, our daily, of your daily mercies, that we may live secure and content in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes from the prophet Jeremiah, the 20th chapter. O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot, for I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him. Say all my close friends, watching for my fall, perhaps he will be deceived. Then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will, will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. Lord of hosts, who test the righteous, who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For to you have I committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of the evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. On your wondrous works I will meditate and I will declare your greatness. The epistle is from Romans chapter 6 and the basis of our sermon today. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you were once slaves of sin, you who were once slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The 
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. If it is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaimed on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our hymn is 659 in the Lutheran service book, Lord of Our Life.
In the holy name of Jesus, amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, by your word in sacrament, put to death our old Adam and raise us to new life in Christ, our new Adam, that we would not be enslaved to our flesh, but serve the Master Jesus. In his name, amen. In the church, sometimes we use phrases, we use words, we have shorthands for different things that we are trying to explain that, let's be honest, sometimes go over our heads. We sometimes have words like justification, that is, how we are made right with God, or sanctification, which is holiness, or how we are made holy. And sometimes we just sit there in the pew and pretend that we understand what these words mean, but sometimes it really doesn't register what the Bible is saying, what pastor is saying. One of the phrases that we encounter a lot of the times, not only in the scriptures, but also in sermons and hymns and many other places, is the old Adam. The old Adam, and Adam just means man, in other words, the old man, doesn't refer to your father or your husband, as the case may be, but it's our fallen human flesh, that sinful, broken, that part of us that is just hell-bent, hell-bound, on sinning and doing whatever it wants. Something that has happened since the very beginning, since Adam and Eve fell into sin. That first Adam, the old Adam, is given to us for all of us who have earthly fathers here on earth. It's that old sinful self that clings to us no matter where we are or who we are or what we are about to do. And there's one thing. One thing that everybody needs to know about their old Adam, and it's this. Your old Adam always gets it wrong. That is, our whole human flesh, its desires, its actions, its fantasies, its impulses, are inherently bent toward hell, death, and destruction. Ever since the fall of the first Adam, all men and women, begotten of the earthly father, are plagued with this inherited predisposition to rebellion and sin. Now, if you don't believe me, I'll let you borrow my three-year-old for a few days. And you'll very quickly see that even the youngest, sweetest, and most innocent-looking child amongst us even has its old Adam with it. The old Adam can literally not help himself. He's a fool. He's an idiot. He's stupid. He's a liar. A loser who suffers from the biggest Napoleon complex of all time. The real God delusion. The idea that somehow, in some way, he's actually in charge. That he is actually God. And the old Adam thinks that because he knows the difference between good and evil, what we discussed last week in our sermon, the law and the gospel, that he is somehow justified in all that he does. He knows how to play the game. So when our old Adam sits there in the pew and hears the law of God, that is what you should do and what you should not do, he hears that he has lied, he has cheated, he has stolen, he is then driven to justify himself and make it right, to wriggle out from underneath the weight of the law. So your old Adam, just like my old Adam, will sit there and figure out how to extricate himself from the situation. Well, I don't really cheat that much. Well, I don't lie that much. Well, I, I don't really have lustful thoughts all that much, only on certain occasions. And like mental gymnastics, the old Adam is constantly trying to figure out the good work that he did that might excuse the bad work that he is doing. Somehow we equate that if we hold open the door for somebody at the grocery store or in line, or if we let somebody cut in line at Walmart or something like this, that somehow that action erases all the other actions that we've done. And then the old Adam in us also hears the gospel the good news of Jesus Christ. And he says, oh yes, I am forgiven. I live in grace. Bring it on. Let's do some more sin. The old Adam in us hears St. Paul's works, words, where sin abounds, there grace much more abounds, and says, hey, let's sin more. I'm under grace. I'm free. I'm forgiven. I'll just keep doing what I do. Jesus loves me. 
The old Adam sits there and hears, I'm not under the law, I'm under grace. I'm free, free to sin. Well, God loves me, so I'm good. Well, he and I understand each other after all. And then since I am so good and because I do good things and I'm not as bad as everybody else, I'm all right. The old Adam is a brawling, drunken, gluttonous, lust-filled, philandering, egocentric, self-idolizing, self-justifying party animal who thinks he's God. And if you want a really good look at the old Adam in all his boisterous glory, I believe the very unholy and raunchy comedy Animal House will suffice. Yes, the old frat boy classic, which I recommend nobody watch, but if you've seen it, will fill you in completely on exactly what the old Adam is after. He's after anything for himself. Yes, I think indeed we might as well term our old Adam as party boy Adam. It's that side of us that looks in the mirror and sees a smiling face looking back at us and says, let's party. Let's continue in sin. You've probably met him. I know I have. He is there every time I look in the mirror. Party boy Adam is that side of you that can't stop belittling others, can't stop giving advice, can't stop interfering in everything, even though no one cares what you think. That drive to chase after women or men, the egocentric side of yourself that just won't go away, the godlike disposition we love to fantasize about. Well, if I was president, I know what I'd do. Well, if they would just let me be governor for the day, I would fix this situation. Well, if I was Wonder Woman, well, if I was a supermodel, if I was Jason Momoa, if I was a rock star, etc. Well, if I had the family farm, well, if I were his parents, well, if I was pastor for the day. Just fill in your fantasy here, folks, and it will work. And the scary part that I'm sure that you've probably realized by now in your life, if you've been around the block even more than once, is that you cannot control that side of you very well, can you? No matter what you want to do, there he is. Party boy always wanting his way, always his thing. Party boy needs to die. He can't be fixed. He can't be reformed. He can't be controlled. He doesn't respond to education. He has, in fact, gone to college to do everything but be educated. He's here to party only. Not even mother's nagging can really reform him or slow him down. Now, old age might slow him down a little bit, at least physically speaking, but it doesn't slow down the desire. We just get more creative even to the point of partying with ourselves in our own fantasy world. Now, you can probably dress party boy Adam up, at least for Sunday morning and for polite company, maybe for friends and for mom and dad and grandma. But deep down, party boy Adam has only one aim in life, and that is to sin. The problem with party boy Adam is that he hasn't received the baptismal memo that he, the divine coroner, has declared him legally dead. His baptismal death certificate has been signed, sealed, and delivered. He's been crucified with Jesus, the second Adam, the new man, the one who has been buried in a dark tomb, and that old Adam has rested there while the new man, Christ Jesus, has gotten out of the tomb to live in newness of life. That's what your baptism has done. It's drowned party boy Adam. But party boy Adam just doesn't know it yet. Baptism actually precipitates an entire life crisis. A crisis which, quite frankly, I've str struggled to understand for years now. You see, after baptism, there are now two versions of you. An old Adam and a new Adam an old you and a new you, a hell-bent, sinful you, and a heaven-bound child of God you. One is legally dead to sin, 
and the other is legally alive in Christ Jesus. But the problem with all things legal, and we can see it in our courts all the time, is that legal things take time. It takes time for the word of God to have its way. It takes time for God to do what he is going to do. And God, for whom a thousand years is but a day, and a day is but a thousand years, as the scripture says, isn't in a scream and hurry. That is where faith and patient endurance has to come in. You actually have to endure with party boy Adam. You have to live with him all the days of your life until you die and he dies. What's worse is you're going to actually have to work through party boy Adam. Literally everything you have to do in life, you're going to have to do through your flesh, which party boy Adam also seems to inhabit and wants to use for all his desires. The very same self that is looking for any and every excuse to sin and will do it also gets to use the body. We are both saint, forgiven in Christ Jesus, made alive and holy, and sinner at the same time. That's the struggle. St. Paul calls the old Adam a body of death in our reading today. That means it must be coerced, threatened, chastised, beaten, disciplined, even bribed to do what we want it to do. And it kills him. Holiness does not suit the old Adam. He would rather slave for Lord's sin. St. Paul says in Romans 6 today that holiness is a drag to him. But Jesus says you can only serve one master, not two. You always hate one over the other and serve one over the other. Jesus was talking about money. St. Paul is talking about sin. You only get one master and it's not going to be sin. You are dead to Lord's sin. You are free from that. You are now slaves to righteousness with Lord Jesus, which is actually the only way to freedom. Old party boy Adam wants nothing to do with that, though. He thinks freedom means he keeps getting to do what he wants to do, and he gets to keep serving Lord sin because he's free. He thinks, let's keep on sitting that grace may abound. He needs to shut up and he needs to die. And it only takes a few little words to do that. I am baptized. I belong to Christ Jesus, not sin. You're dead to those losers, sin and death. You are set free from the bonds of sin. You are alive to God and Christ, crucified with him, buried with him, and raised with him to newness of life. Party boy Adam is going to have to take a back seat. Shall we sin that grace may abound, St. Paul says, and he says, by no means. No. Party boy Adam hates to hear that word no. Remember the body of death has to be disciplined though and told no. But he does hate it. You can see the old Adam come out on the sweetest, cutest, smallest child's face when they're told no. Ask me how I know this. And then they all of a sudden, when they hear that word no, they look at you like, what did you just say to me? I, I can't believe you just said that. As if, how dare you? I'm the center of the universe when we know we're not. And we can see what happens from there in a little child. There will be denial. There will be bargaining. There will be anger. There might even be sadness, depression over loss and grief and much more. And it's probably amplified as we adults hear no as well. I bet you could see the same reaction on your own face when you tell yourself no or when somebody tells you no. That thing that you think you deserve, that you think should be yours, that you've worked hard for, that you think you're entitled to. What do you mean no? So how does this all end? How does party boy Adam get put out of his misery? St. Paul reminds us that the Lord's sin will pay out his wages. The wages of sin is death. St. Paul also reminds us that the Lord Jesus will pay out his wages, the gift of life. And in the end, party boy Adam will get exactly what he deserves. 
That's why the party boy Adam in you hates the law and tries to wriggle out of it. And the new Adam in you, baptized into Christ, delights in the word and the law of God. You're baptized. You're dead to sin. You are his and he is yours. And now, now you have the mind of Christ and his will. A mind that delights in the word and law of God that wants nothing more than to hear his word and receive his gift of body and blood. Knowing that you are destined for holiness and life in heaven. Forgiven and renewed in Jesus, you are free. Do not then submit again to the yoke of slavery and sin. Sin is slavery. So put that old party boy in his baptismal place and tell him, no. Tell him you are baptized. That you belong to Christ. And then trust in Christ that he will indeed rescue us from this body of death in the end. Amen. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now I just realize I announced the Apostles' Creed, but I actually had the Nicene Creed written in the bulletin. My apologies for that. So we go on to the prayers of the church. O oh, merciful Father, hear your people as they pray in the name of Jesus on behalf of all manner and conditions of people. Faithful God, when we are fearful of our enemies and weary of the struggle, you have been our shield and our strength. Grant to us the full measure of your grace to, to sustain us against all who are against us. And help us to endure the trials and temptations of this mortal life. And be faithful unto death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, with your favor upon us, we pray you to help us in our fight against temptation and sin. Help us to live holy and righteous lives by the power of your Spirit. And keep us from surrendering ourselves to the slavery from which Christ has set us free. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we remember those who serve us in Jesus' name. Bless the leaders of our synod, all pastors and teachers and all church workers, that they may be faithful in their calling and honor Christ with an obedient life. Raise up those who will follow in their steps and serve your kingdom in the years to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, give healing and strength to the sick and all afflicted in body or mind, and grant to those who struggle the gift of peace of mind and heart. Hear us especially for those who have requested our prayers, including Lillian, 
Linda, Leanna, Phyllis, Joyce, Linda, Charlene, Dwayne, Lois, and Dawn. And those whom we name in our hearts now. Restore our nation and the world in health and livelihood, and preserve us from pestilence and fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, Father, and everything else for which we need, we pray, you to grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died and rose and lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Again, thank you for being with us this, uh, this evening or this morning, depending on when you're watching this video. Um, and just a reminder, we will not be holding physical services for the next three weeks as we see this spike of the COVID-19 in both Lake uh, Park and also Spirit Lake areas. So we will continue, though, to have a drive through communion, and that will be held tomorrow, Sunday, uh, from 9 to 10.30 a.m. So you can go to Concordia Lutheran Church in Lake Park for a drive through communion, same style that we have done before, from 9 to 10.30, getting as close as we can to everybody's normal service times. Again, sorry for any inconvenience at this time. I know there's a lot of you that are looking for church at this moment in your life, and we will do the best we can to resume services as soon as we can. Stay safe and stay healthy. God bless.